Welcome fellow horror hounds and welcome to the latest episode of Talk and Stalk, your unholy home for horror. I'm your host as always, Barry, and today's podcast I'm really just going to be talking about three horror movies that I highly recommend uh, that I really don't feel get enough attention. Um, I feel like these are three movies that very much kind of flew under the radar upon release. Um, all, all three of these films um, I actually watched quite recently. Uh, one of these films I've actually already seen probably about six or seven times now, and the other two films I've actually seen a couple of times each, um, all of which very good films. Um, I'd recommend them to anyone that's a horror fan. Uh, these are films that have generally been met with a lot of praise. Their reviews have generally been very good, um, but I really don't feel as though they quite get the attention that these films warrant. Now, the first film um, is, it was released back in 2015. Um, great movie, in my opinion, and it's called The Invitation. To me, this movie is pretty much a perfect exercise in slow mounting tension. This is a film that's very deftly directed. It stars Logan Marshall Green, um, and it's really a very kind of slow burning movie. It, it's kind of more a psychological thriller, but there are certainly horror elements to it, um, certainly in which the direction uh, the movie actually takes. Very good film. Um, I felt myself hugely immersed in this movie from, from start to finish. Um, it's probably going to be one of them movies that probably isn't accessible to all. Because as I said, it's a very slow burning kind of movie. Um, but yeah, stick with this film. It, it, it's just very well directed. Um, it's basically about Logan Marshall Green plays a guy that with his new girlfriend is actually invited to a dinner party, uh, which is actually being held by his ex. And he goes there and he starts to suspect um, that something isn't quite right. Uh, there's a lot of his old friends that are there present and uh, there's just something not quite right with this dinner party. And it plays along the lines of that whole kind of, is he being paranoid or is there something genuinely sinister afoot? Um, it's, as I said, very well handled. Uh, this is a movie that, it was an independent movie as well. So, you know, the director actually had full creative control with this film as well, which is what I like to see, because I think too many films out there are uh, quite often um, butchered by the studio. Now, you know, at the end of the day, I realise that no director is bigger than the studio itself and that, but uh, this is a great independently financed movie. Um, that uh, it's actually on Netflix. It's been on Netflix actually for quite some time. Um, you know, it was released, as I said, released back in 2015. Um, it, it's just a very well-made movie that really does kind of keep you on the edge of your seat. Um, it's really not your traditional by-the-book horror movie by any means. Um, this is a movie that you really feel like you're there with Logan Marshall Green in this film and it's kind of is he being paranoid or is there something actually happening it also stars John Carroll I mean this film actually does have a pretty good cast uh, John Carroll Lynch is in there um, an actor that so many people would be familiar with um, but he's not the most well known of people so he's one of them actors that you look at him you recognize him from countless things um, but he, it's just, he's got one of them names, you know, a lot of people, they know him by sight, but probably don't but know him by name. Um, I still think one of the best performances of his was in 2007 Zodiac, which I actually think is one of David Finch's very best films and possibly his most underrated. Um, he was also Twisty the Clown in uh, American Horror Story Freak Show. Um, but yeah, this is a film that I highly recommend, uh, slow mounting tension um that i don't want to go into details or anything like that but it has an end in the direction in which this film actually veers into um will stay with you that's all i'll say um it's not a film that you're going to quickly forget um now the other movie on the list is uh, a little more recent actually it was released in 2019 um i didn't actually see it until early last year um it was a get it was a film i'd never heard of actually um, and it's called I See You, and it actually stars Helen Hunt, you know, great actress. 
Uh, obviously getting an Oscar for As Good As It Gets, you know, the 1997 film alongside Jack Nicholson. Um, uh, not to go too much off topic, um, it was kind of hard to recognise her at first. And Helen Hunt seems to be kind of a shadow of her former self. Um, I think she's clearly had a lot of work done and uh, it hasn't really gone according to plan. But um, anyway, the movie, I see you. Uh, great film. Um, I went into this film blind, only really knowing the basic plot synopsis. I hadn't read any reviews. So I didn't really go in with any kind of expectations for this film. And I actually bought this film blind. Um, I spent £15 on the Blu-ray, took a risk on it. And I think it was a risk that paid off. This was actually a really good film. And again, this is a movie that is actually on Netflix. It's been on there for a, a little while now. Um, and it's really about the less you know about this film, the better. Um it's best try not to read up on too much of this film. It's it's basically about um, a police officer that's trying to solve a missing child's case. Um, you know, it's believed there's um, a child murderer out there. Um, and he's trying to solve this case. Uh, at the same time, he's kind of jostling with his dysfunctional uh, family life. Uh, his wife actually cheated on him, played by Helen Hunt. And, uh, you know, the son's by no means forgiving. And let's just say that strange things start happening. Um, it's a film that manages to be quite creepy. And what I loved about this movie was you kind of sat there and you're really trying to work out what's going on. What direction is this film going in? Is this a supernatural film? Is this a slasher movie? What kind of movie is this? And that's what I really liked about it. Um, again, like The Invitation, I felt like this film was very deftly directed, um, you know, with some good performances. And it will all make sense in the end. All of the pieces do come together with, like The Invitation, it has an ending that I don't think you're quickly going to forget. Um, it's it's very well directed. And uh, yeah, as I said, I mean, I, I went into this film not knowing what kind of movie this was. I mean, obviously, it's within the horror category and all that. And, uh, you know, looking at the poster, looking at the, uh, the the box cover, we kind of see a mask, um, like a, a frog looking esque mask. Um, so I would kind of like, is this a slasher movie? Um, yeah, I, I don't really want to say anything else um, other than that. But yeah, going to ICU, uh, knowing as little as possible. And I think it's a film that you could certainly be surprised with. Um, it certainly throws a few curveballs. Um, let's say that. So again, it's a film that's been met with quite a lot of praise. Its reviews have generally been really good, um, but not enough people have heard of it, um, let alone seen it. So yeah, I see you. Uh, now, the third film on the list is a film that was released uh, quite some time back, actually, uh, released back in 2003. And um, this is a film that had a very limited... Now, bearing in mind, the last two films I talked about um had had limited releases i see you in fact i believe was actually direct to blu-ray this isn't a film that even got a theatrical release and uh as for the invitation i think that actually had a very limited release as did this uh this is a film called dead end and this was released in 2003 now this is quite a contrast to the last two films that i talked about um dead end is a film that manages to be creepy quite creepy, you know, great sense of atmosphere. Um, but there's also a lot of humour in there and the humour works. This movie has a very kind of Twilight Zone aesthetic to it. Um, it you know, without going into spoilers or anything like that, there's a definite kind of Twilight Zone-esque um, vibe to, to this movie. And it stars Lin Shay and Ray Wise, two actors who I love. Obviously, Ray Wise, he's done loads of stuff, but probably most notable for Twin Peaks. Um, you know, of course, he was in Robocop in 87 and that. And Lin Shay, who, of course, has pretty much become kind of a horror icon. Lin Shay, obviously the, the, the sister of Robert Shay, head of New Line Cinema. Uh, you know, the Insidious films and I um, mean, the list, the list goes on. Um, they're great in this movie. I mean, the whole cast, the whole cast is great. Um, they really bounce off each other really well. Uh, they play a married couple who spend a lot of the time arguing. <laughs> um, this film's just good fun. And I've watched this film quite a few times. 
And uh, I'm a big fan, a very kind of claustrophobic in kind of single location settings. And this film definitely has that. Um, the, pretty much the entire movie, in fact, is on this one stretch of road. Uh, they're going on a Christmas vacation to see the family. And uh, the dad, played by Ray Wise, decides to take a shortcut. And uh, he quickly soon regrets it. Uh, this, route, this road seemingly goes on forever. Uh, some strange things start happening. Uh, they pick up a hitchhiker. I really don't want to talk too much more about it. Um, but yeah, and again, the ending, a great ending. Um, I mean, Dead End, as I said, I think it's kind of a great blend between horror and humour. And I know quite a few people that have seen this film and everyone that I've spoken to uh, really likes it, really enjoys this movie. Um, yeah, so it's like, you know, creepy atmosphere. They're on the road uh, late at night. The entire movie, aside from a scene near the end, the entire movie is actually at night. And uh, as I said, it really manages to be funny. Um, yeah, strange things start happening. A black car shows up and uh, yeah, I don't really want to say anything else other than that. But Dead End is definitely a film that I think deserves, you know, I'm not saying that any of these three are, you know, some of the best movies of all time or anything like that. I do think The Invitation is actually probably one of my favourite psychological horror movies of all time now, though. Um, and I See You is, yes, great movie. Um, but these films certainly deserve attention. They certainly deserve um, to be watched. Um, so, yeah, they're the three films that I really wanted to uh, talk about. Um, there is actually one other film that I'm actually going to throw in quickly, actually, because I watched it for the second time um, just the other night. And it's a film that was released back in 2014. So again, still quite recent, uh, called Coherence. Um, this was a really good film. Again, this movie has a definite Twilight Zone aesthetic to it. Um, this is about as Twilight Zone-esque as you can really get, I feel. Um, it's basically about a group of friends having a dinner party and uh, they hear about an impending comment that's supposed to you know, fly over, uh, fly over the earth and that. And uh, let's just say that strange things start happening. They start to realise that there seems to be, um, how do I say this without spoiling? Um, there seems to be kind of a parallel dimension of themselves. They find a house, all of the electricity goes off, but they find a house in the distance that has electricity still on. Um, I don't really want to say more than that, but Coherence is a very mind-bending movie that's probably going to have you scratching your head on a few occasions uh, but I definitely think it requires a viewing especially for anyone like I said anyone that likes mind-bending films anyone that's a fan of the Twilight Zone um, Coherence is uh, quite a surrealistic uh, trip um, and it actually stars his name is actually escaping me at the moment um, it's got quite a cast but it actually does star uh, the actor that actually played uh, Xander from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Obviously, great show. Um, his name is actually escaping me at this present point. Um, but yeah, Coherence. Again, definitely a film that I would recommend. Um, so yeah, that's it, I think, for today's podcast. I mean, there are plenty more films out there that I would recommend to horror fans. Um, you know, and uh, there's just so many. There's so many hidden gems out there. There's so many films that fly under the radar um, I think with horror, you have to kind of take the rough with the smooth. And now, Coherence isn't really a horror movie. I have actually kind of thrown just a sci-fi horror, a sci-fi movie in there. Um, but I think it deserved a mention. I watched it recently, so it's still quite fresh in the mind. Um, but I think for every good horror film out there, there's probably about 10 to 15 bad ones. Um, but uh, yeah, you take the rough with the smooth, you know. So anyway, that's that's it for today's podcast. Uh, thanks to everyone that listened and uh, I'll be back again soon. And if you liked what you've heard, uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, Talk and Stalk. And uh, yeah, I'll be back again soon. Take care.